funnier that, funnier than that, I'm a man standing in the river selling water. So I heard that and I never went back to another satsang. <laughs> so I just went, oops. <laughs> and I'm a believer of satsang to be just like that. It's really like being in a spiritual shoe store and we put out some shoes, certain different statements, and if the shoe fits, wear it, you know. If it doesn't, go shopping for other shoes. This isn't like you've got to wear these shoes. It's just hopefully in situations in your life or whatever, you walk in here and something is said and it triggers like an aha. Not ha that promotes, get, oh, I've got to do more, but an aha that's sort of relaxing. It's sort of like you're disarmed instead of called to arms. Yeah. And then, okay, if that's the case, maybe here's some more, and then maybe some of the same line of shoes will fit, and you're on to something. Yeah. And so this was like one of those shoes that fit. Hey, I'm a man standing by the river selling water. Whoops, my head went like a dog. What? Because I was there on the fucking riverbank buying water, where there's the water. And then he says, I'm a man in the water selling river, and that's enough. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Because even then, the satsang, there was a subtle us and them. Because he was better, supposedly. He was the awaked one, and then everyone. And they also, as they get popular, because too many people, they get raised. So there's usually, they're higher than usual. So it has this sense, you know, someone above you, like in a pharmacy, they're usually above you all the time when you go get your medicine. Yeah, they're sitting on like a little god figure with the white, and here goes your Oxycontin or something. So you think they could do, do no wrong because they have a pseudo sense of authority because they're above you. Happens a lot with these type of situations. So someone's speaking at you, and I had a feeling, even in my own thing, I'm saying, oh, yes, I'm very clear on non-duality. But there was a lot of duality being expressed in this meeting of non-duality. There was that person, he had it, we didn't have it. But we had more than the other people <laughs> that were out there. So it was like a ring. We were close, but we weren't there. <laughs> so what do I mean? I went. I went to the thing. And I had been reading this stuff. And I came in, and I felt like while, while I was going in there, I had been observing what's arising. I mean, we're not two levels below a coconut. You know, you see, you feel things. I mean, so I was, I was, I was observing my physical condition, my emotional maybe condition, my mental condition. And I sat there, and the lady was sharing, not anything about that, but I rose, my, I put my hand up, I said, you know, I came in here doing that, and suddenly, just by listening to this satsang, I saw that assumption that it was me watching for all these conditions arising was a mental condition. I had that little thing of the aperture catching me before I could assume I was behind the camera. I saw me, that, that all the activity that implies that me, I saw the me before the camera. Therefore, I must be behind the camera. Yeah? Or who the fuck is seeing it? Yeah? So this is what happens. Because the mental state's very quick. It will be caught in front of the camera, but it will say that it is the one who's caught it in front of the camera. So in a sense, it's the thief and the policeman. So you catch it, and then it plays the role of, I'm the one who caught it. It's still the selfing. So we were talking about this today in the car. And... So you may feel, all right, I've been very clear, I've heard this, I feel like I'm, I have an understanding. An understanding doesn't open the aperture. The understanding is for an open aperture to sort of translate this place. It doesn't open the aperture. It allows yeah, something to move freely through. Yeah, the ap it will actually almost in a way keep it open, but it doesn't open the aperture. What? It's seeing, it's not view. View is an understanding of seeing, yeah? Seeing illuminates the view. View doesn't produce seeing. It allows seeing to ha get some legs here in your little action figure life, yeah? So your action figure life will understand that, hey, listen, I'm not managerial quality. Understand, it'll understand some certain rudimentary conditions which allows the aperture sort of to stay open or and more open but it doesn't produce the opening. Yeah. 
Because that which is here, coming through here, comes to us. It comes through this little thing, yeah? So, all right, so the aperture opened. So I saw that I, I wasn't that which was saying it was watching all the other shit. Okay, now this, I went on my merry way, reading about this stuff, going to some people, and so the next few months I caught it about eight times, yeah? basically. I didn't, but the aperture. The aperture would open so fast you'd catch the thief, yeah, before it put on the policeman uniform. You'd catch it, and then it puts the policeman uniform really fast, but I saw it as the thief. And it happened maybe seven, eight times, and then it was like a hundred monkey syndrome. The head got it and just went, bang, and now whatever the fuck arises cannot possibly be me. It's just that freaking simple. Now, I don't know what I am, but through recognizing what I'm not, I get a sense of what I am, yeah? I get a sense of what I am because what I am is what sees what I'm not. What I'm not tries to understand what's not, but it can't see what's not because it's looking from what's not, yeah? Meaning what's not this mental idea that's fixated on this body implying that you're the doer, the haver, the loser, the thinker, this and that, yes? Yeah. So that, that what's not cannot see what we are. And this is the dilemma. In most cases, many of us are in the position of looking for what we are from what we're not. Yeah? We've been misplaced. We've been, we've been put on another reference point, And that reference point, what we are, doesn't seem to, seem to be available, so we're looking for it. Which, as St. Francis tried to correct, what's looking is what you're looking for. We don't see that, right? Because we think we already know what's looking, which is Paul, the body, which it isn't. Yeah? Paul is not looking, is not seeing. The eye is not seeing. The eye facilitates something to see. Yeah? The ear facilitates something to see. You could have a perfect eye, and if the body was dead, it wasn't seeing a damn thing. If you could transplant that dead eye into a live body, it would facilitate seeing. It's not the freaking eye. It's not the ear. It's the body is not doing the actions. It's expressing. It's the mechanism for an action to occur, but the body is not doing the action. Yes? There's no ownership in it. Most of the stuff that's our actions in your body are totally involuntary. Your blood, you don't pump your blood, you don't beat your heart. Can you imagine if you were digesting your food? You'd be fucking at home all day. I forgot that burrito from Thursday. You gotta spend at least an hour. Those beans were fucking undercooked. Dun, 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 dun. No, it'd be impossible. Yet, subtle processes, you believe that you're the doer of it. Thinking? Give me a freaking break. All right, let me set out and try and, and start thinking. How would, you know, you have no freaking clue, all right? All you see, you hear the thought. That's basically it. You have no diagram or blueprint how a thought is constructed. It's unbelievable, yeah? So you just, you're just like the screen, it passes over it, and bingo. But as soon as it passes over it, and there's acknowledgement of it, the mental state arises and says, I'm the one who's acknowledging it. I'm the one. And the I would be great if it was pinning it on the I am, but it's actually pinning it on the body. There's the misdirection, yeah? So now you're living from a reference point that's made up, reinforced, and fabricated at the expense of seeing it from another point. And maybe this point would make much more sense to this whole system to, hold to you than this point. Really? And this is the whole point of this message. This message... If you think the, this is going to be a more refined spiritual path and it's going to get you to somewhere you want to go quicker, this is the wrong fucking store to be shopping at. Maybe there's Neo something you can find, but this is basically nothing. That's it. It's attempting to question what you're not. It has no questioning of what you are. It has questioning about what you're not. Because if you see what you're not, which you can, if you can understand what you're not, which you can, if you can study what, what you're not, which you can, yeah, there's some value in it. If you try to study what you are, you can't. If you try to understand what you are, you can't. If you try to experience what you are, you can't. Yeah? This is totally frustrated, and you're left with just conceptual fucking ideas that don't hold any water in daily life, 
or this will prove valuable. Like in recovery, we would say, all right, if that which is claiming to be the one who's hearing the knowledge, that self-knowledge avails you nothing. But if you had knowledge of self, it would avail you quite a lot of value, yeah? This is the whole message in my view. Non-duality is a fact. You either agree with it or not. It doesn't freaking matter. It doesn't change that it's a fact. It doesn't. You can run around and yell it to be a false and this and shit. It doesn't change a damn thing. You can either seemingly be awake to it right now, or you can seemingly be asleep to it, but you're awake. It's fucking completely obvious. Your conscious experience has no volition on your side. If your eyes are open and you're pointing this way, you're going to see whatever's there. You're not going, oh, I won't see that, but oop, fuck, I've been <laughs> proven wrong again. You have no freaking volition. Well, give it up. Give up the fucking assumption that you're the cause of shit. You're not. You're an expression. You're, in a, you're an effect, basically. Yeah? That's what's so frustrating. Because if you think you're the thinker, it seems like you should have some power over what comes after you, do they? Can you go, hey, listen, I got an important engagement tomorrow. Can we please stop at 11 tonight and maybe start up at 8? Give me nine hours. Yeah, two in the morning, you're up going over fucking some insane thing. You have no, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So, this point of recognizing, okay, you think you understand, and to the head that means you know, and that means, oh, stop all other investigation and stop at this aperture. It's not that way, yeah? Keep entertaining, and when you arise, there'll be a moment or maybe an eternity, because they're both the same thing, you will see that which you're calling yourself. You'll see the little mist and you'll have a hit of being in behind the camera. And just one little hit can convince you completely. Not convince you as this. This will never be convinced. It's a dualistic system. It can be thoroughly convinced you're an alcoholic and a half hour later they're drinking. It doesn't fucking hold. But in what you are, there's a convincing. In what you are, there's an absolute understanding. Does it trickle into you? You know what happens? You lose total interest in that. You, to you lose total interest in the freaking fool's gold dream. I want it to stabilize. I want it to be completely... It's not happening in this volatile place. That wants to be stabilized is agitation. Stabilization probably wants to be agitated. It wants to fucking have some freaking fun. Yeah. But we, as agitation, I want it to stabilize. How, it's like there's a great statement in Zen from Faith Mind, a famous treatise. It says, you know, you can't use activity to produce stillness. That would be activity. Try to get out of that one. Uh, if you try to get out of something, isn't that activity? Especially if you try to get out of something to arrive at stillness which is what a lot of us are doing. You're fucking meditating 11 hours. That's activity. It hurts your fucking ass. Your mind's crazy. I mean, your blood isn't circulating into your legs. So if you're sitting like that, there's a lot of freaking activity going on. And what? What are you trying to put? Oh, nothing. I'm not. Who fucking sits for 13 hours? There's an agenda somewhere in the selfing, for sure. It's not, oh, I just love sitting. 13 hours? I've done it. No, usually they have to break it up. Seven hours sitting, six hours walking, meditate, because you can't handle 13 hours. You ever go into a retreat when it starts? It's beautiful. It's like one of those beautiful pictures of a minimalist zendo. One <laughs> tiny little cushion, then a couple of feet, another tiny cushion. After four days, there's fucking tons of cushions. They've got them up here. They built a little castle because <laughs> the dominant experience is the body. You're trying to make the fucking body comfortable. So there you are, you're, you're in the midst of trying to get out of the kingdom, you're serving the king. <laughs> Why are we so afraid to fucking let, after the riff, huh? I'll take the fucking out of that. Why are we so afraid for something to stop? What's so scary? We have pauses all the time, and it's us that resuscitate it. We bring it back to life when it's been put to rest by looking for fucking more. 
by demanding something from nothing. Nothing is not a store that opens in your whims. It's available on its time, not your time. And it's not a performing animal. It will keep giving you nothing with the hopes that you'll finally realize by you'll be exhausted by relying on the whole failed system and maybe just maybe at that point there'll be a possibility that you cannot have when you're trying to make it. When you're trying to make that possibility, it is far away as fucking possible. If you freaking get exhausted, and what in the Course it says, Course of Miracles, what can a failed system show you? It can show you it's failed, hasn't it? Hasn't your thought system, has, it, has your GPS that has been dictating and all the maps you've been downloading for years and all the directions you've taken, has it freaking worked? There's one of famous, we were in Boston, outside of Boston. Julian, you heard all this. I think I did the other night. We were out, uh, I had to go to a, no, I didn't have to, went to a talk near uh, Walden Pond in Massachusetts, in a little town called Lincoln. Very rural area, but high rural, you know, rich people, very nice place I was going to go to. And there was, a, there was a railroad crossing, and there was a big commotion going on. It was about 11.30 at night. Lights were going off. The police were there. And we st had to stop at a stop sign and sit there for a while. And so the cop came over, and we go, officers, what's happening? And he says, oh, a lady was listening to her GPS. It told her to turn right on the tracks, and she... and it said, destination 50 yards. He kept going for 15 yards on the tracks. Hearing this, <laughs> your, fucking, your, your own experience tells you, what the fuck, and you follow this thing. Incredible amount of faith. Well, this is, can you, what is that but just a mimicking of how much freaking faith we have in our head? Give me a break. You don't? This is, uh, you know, I feel almost like um, it's being misrepresented because I feel mostly non-duality gets packaged in a largest category called spirituality, but I see no spirituality in it whatsoever. None. Zippo. It has deadened any fucking interest I ever had in, in transcendence. It has. It's totally taken out all the winds in my little spiritual sails. Literally. I mean, I'm shipwrecked on the rocks of ordinariness, left to my own devices. And you know what? You don't know something's been missing until it shows up, man. The biggest gift I got out of all this is acceptance, really. A deep acceptance of that especially that I could never find true acceptance for, which is the action figure. This is the greatest gift the action figure ever got was whatever entertaining non-duality. Because suddenly it was seen not to be me and that mental hen got off it. And it was like the fucking hallelujah day for the thing. Because it's way too much responsibility and pressure to be constantly thought of as the center of the universe. It's a fucking Toyota, you know? It's like a functional little Ford. It's not like the you know Indianapolis 500 pace car. It's just freaking getting me to stores, shitting, doing whatever. It's not like the chariot of the gods. You're not gonna ride this to fucking heaven. It's not. This is left in the garage down below, yeah? I just don't. So over time, I've seen the greatest beneficiary of all this has been that which I'm not, truly. Yeah? What it couldn't get with, for its life, it now is expressing. Yeah? It could never possibly get it, but it ex can express it, which is awesome. It can express understanding, and it can express compassion. It can express tons of things. But it can't, for the life of itself, produce it or get it, or, yeah, or grab it. It just can't. But it can express. Yeah. So suddenly there's a reboot, and then see if you like it the direction after it's been rebooted. Why would you? Why would you not renew your subscription if you finally found something that works? Why would you go back to the other channel? You get two thousand shows, but they all suck. <laughs> 
This one is like got HBO 24-7, good production, great writing. And to me, they all turn into comedies, which is awesome. Before, they were like CNN news flashes all day. Now it's just a comedy skit all day. It's got, it didn't get rid of anything. It just changed the whole fucking format of it. It's awesome. That's the beauty. See, you're hoping for everything to be taken. It gets, it gets reconfigured. That's what it does. Everything stays just as it is, but it's got a whole different fucking feel and intent than it used to, basically, really. No more news channel. <laughs> it's just basic, basically, it's like <laughs> reruns of Seinfeld, basically. <laughs> but not the first year, because it sucked, basically. When they got into their characters in the third or fourth year, it's like that. Like the best of best, the best of nothing. It's great. So... And you know, all the people who ask me about when is it going to stabilize, do I ever say it's going to stabilize? <laughs> do I? Did I ever say it's going to stabilize? You're going to be absolutely free of any of the worldly problems. I haven't said a fucking thing like that for years, ever. This is about accepting, being able to fit yourself around circumstances instead of constantly trying to fit them around you. It's just the easier, softer way to live. And you cannot provoke or, or achieve or process yourself into that state. It has to be, you have to be put into it. And then you can express that this is an expression, not a cause. It expresses what's causing it, yeah? If the mental state is causing it, it expresses that shit. If something else, is causing it, which is, yeah, then it expresses that. So non-duality for, in my view, and this is all my take, you know, you can go to someone else and it could sound differently. It, it's a simple statement of negation, yeah, not to. That's what non-duality means, not to. So truly there is no non-duality meaning ever. There's never been a duality meaning, and there's no non-duality teachers. There's duality teachers. There's people just like you and me who maybe have seen some of the patterns. Why? Because their aperture was given a little bit of a grace, and they got a nice big glimpse of what's happening, yes? And so hopefully, or maybe not, they'll inform others of what they're not. So that that which you are, which is masquerading most of the day and living from and narrating from and deciding from the what you're not may be seen as what? Not you. Yeah? That's all it is. So you share and then you try to pit, point out the pitfalls and most of the pitfalls have been pointed out in the history of spirituality. And incredible statements from Ramana, Hoang Po, other people. They're in there. There's nuggets all over the place, yeah? So maybe because, you know, hey, man, these people will never see me as an authority, so I'll bring up an old authority, all right? So I'll say the exact same thing, but he said it. So, oh, you know, there is it. It's just like if you give your girlfriend incredible advice, never fucking hears it. You tell your friend, he tells her, whoa, Bill is so fucking wise. Yeah, they can't hear it from you. So here, no one wants to hear it from Paul Hedeman, Ramana Maharshi. Oh, Ramana Maharshi. So all right, Ramana Maharshi, yes, the saint of all non-duality, says thousands of different things. He tells people who are at the state of practicing, you better fucking practice. He says people who are having trouble dealing with the head, surrender. You know, turn your only life over to a higher power and, and live the life of thy will be done. Then he meets you and you're at another aperture point. He says, to whom would you surrender and to who would surrender? Who would surrender to whom? So he just totally, totally negates what he said as surrender based on who the hell he's talking to. And then you're thinking, well, he's the patron saint in our duality. He could be seen as the patron saint of tons of practice and devotion and bhakti. He can see it every way because he didn't get stuck in a dogmatic thing. He's looking at situations and he said what was appropriate. So if someone comes here and their house, they're having so much fucking trouble in their life. They're getting divorced. They've lost their house, this and that. And they're here, and knowing, not knowing or knowing it, a part of them is looking to get relief from non-duality. They want to use it like a drug. They want to feel better. So they, want, so they hear that there is no person. So when the girlfriend comes home and says, Paul, why didn't you do the dishes? You go, well, there's no Paul to do the dishes. There's no me. 
you know, no girlfriend left me. They're, and all they want to do is cry. Oh, but there was no one she left, and no, and no one left me. And give me a freaking break. Just get down to the emotion. But they're like constipated because they're trying to use non-duality as a skillful means, and it ain't. It will thwart your attempt to take advantage of it. You have to go to it with nothing and expect nothing, in a sense. And that's impossible for this. So then you, saw, you realize you're not this, and then that which is impossible, this, is possible. But not for this. This will express it, but it will not get it. It will be the form to express, it will not get. Once you got all that clear, and then you watch, all right, then why is it that when I feel like I have an awakening, then after a few days it wanes, and it seems to loss, and it goes down, and it gets dim again? Well. Maybe because something arose after the awakening that you believe, if I have an awakening, nothing. Nope, like if I had the right fucking bug spray, no cockroaches will ever appear in my, my uh, thing. And after I did it, the, night, the next night you turn on lights and the cockroaches shoot into the refrigerator. What? How did that fucking possibly happen? So people have this as subject. If I have an awakening experience, everything fucking should change. My wife won't bother me, the IRS will leave me alone, everything. And then they have rude awakenings when it doesn't work out that way. So, because whatever arises, even if it is that, even if it's a free sample of what doesn't arise, the mental state will arise after, claim it, and in the claiming of it, from an after point, it will say it's before it. So now you think you had the awakening, and there goes the awakening. It's that simple. All it does is the same heist 800 freaking times a day. It's not like, oh, this is, it's not a cat burglar. It's not, it's just the same thief. And if you follow the hand that's in the silverware, you're it. <laughs> so you're the thief and the policeman at the exact same time. So, oh, I saw the truth. Nope, you didn't fucking see the truth because... The aperture moves up, and every time you attempt to take the position of what is, it's seen. Where? How? Who? From what is. You don't, it's not, three what is doesn't appear and sees it, and then comes and tells you and charges you tons of money. What, it's here. What is sees, yeah? So open up to the possibility that the aperture, you haven't reached the end point of it, yes? And maybe, just maybe, what you were speaking from a month ago, you'll see. And then the next month, after a few months, and you were assuming you were speaking from the truth, or whatever <laughs> truth it is for you, then you will see whoop, it before the camera. And after you catch it maybe seven or eight times, I hope the, the hundred monkey syndrome will <laughs> kick in, and you'll get it, this thing will arise, wherever my, my fence post is, and it will be the fence post, and it'll be saying it's looking over the fence post to see everything else that's arising. It's arising. Yeah, and there, all right, there you go. Yeah. And there's no point it stops. And the mental state's gonna try to climb out of its little action figure hood and claim it. It's, you gotta, it's not going to go to like, you know, a school and learn good graces. It's going to acclaim because that's its nature. Yeah? It doesn't have life. It has to claim what we offer and it's going to do it. And I believed, I truly did. I believe if even that was the case, there was areas in life that were had a sufficient immunity to that like spiritual electrified fences. So if I had a good enough tradition and I was in that tradition, it wouldn't be able to claim what I was doing in that tradition. That doing wouldn't, it wouldn't be used to, cl to claim a doer, yeah? Well, I don't believe that's so. I've been on a lot of spiritual with big electrified fences, and that thing seems to slip in all the freaking time. So I'm not waiting for it to stop, yeah? I just see it instead of look from it, yes? I don't give a shit about stabilization. I lost, an, I lost all interest in the need to be liberated. I don't want to fucking wake up because I am awake. I don't want enlightenment. What the fuck is that? I don't want fucking anything. I want a coffee, maybe some good food, a good pillow, and those things I can get. 
It's hard on this trip because I'm not being treated as well as I should. <laughs> but I can get it if I work hard enough for it when I get home. So I'm putting off my real, I'm not putting off to awakening. I want to get home to San Francisco <laughs> Thursday. I'm waiting for that. That's like the hallelujah day. <laughs> so if you're here to get a better way of moving, good. You're at, you know, tr try to use it that way. See what happens. I really don't believe it promotes any urge to seek, to tell you the truth, or to refine, or to get better. It doesn't. I think it takes most of it away. You lose interest in it. You lose interest in what you hope would propel you to a better, bigger place. You lose interest in it, at least in this case. Coming back, let's say, as uh, the experiment, yeah? I, I come back, the body, and I'm, I'm, just observe, I'm just sharing my observations. Because you can't, if you get interested in losing interest, that's interest. Yeah? You can't lose interest as a plan. You can observe losing interest, but you can't promote losing interest. That would be interest, yeah? So it's tricky. Just like we have a statement in recovery that gets everybody. It says, uh, you've got to quit playing God. It doesn't work. All right, sounds pretty direct. But if that which is playing God hears, it has to quit playing God. What's that but playing God? So that which is playing God tries to quit playing God. That's playing God ad infinitum. It'll never fucking end. Yeah? So how do you get out of something? You realize you're not in. How many fucking plans to get out have you tried? How many? I'd say in this room, maybe 160 years worth. Had anyone escaped from the prison? Mm -hmm. You get maybe furloughs, which is part of the prison. And you're on the probation system as part of the prison. <laughs> you, you believe in the conviction, so you're not taking off the fucking mangles, whatever. <laughs> so, yes. So, that's it, really. It's my sixth night. It's going to get shorter and shorter. <laughs> because I really believe it's an invitation. And you've heard it for years. And has it really deviated that much? And have I added anything to it? No, I think it's got more and more refined every freaking year. It gets more of a paring down. And I believe that mimics actually what happens as an event here. You get more and more economized and pared down. You travel a lot lighter. It doesn't mean the seas are going to glass over and everything's going to be great and you're always going to have a northeast wind and nothing like that. It just means whatever happens, you travel lighter through it. And after years of having that course be plotted and going through all possibilities, you know, thinking, you know, death imminent, someone you love, cancer, whatever, tons of things, my, my logs on my little journey look pretty good. Captain Paul says, hey, things aren't getting better, but there's, they're better, yeah? Things look like they're getting worse, but they're better, yes, yeah. Just reading you the files, and that's how it seems. Now, if you want more than that, fucking go. There's some people that will charge you a lot of money, and they promise you'll be enlightened. See what happens. Yeah. You wouldn't want enlightenment because you won't be there to enjoy it. Really? Who, who wants? Would you want enlightenment if it if it if the demand is you can you won't be there to enjoy it? No fucking way. <laughs> You know, what you are never seeks. What you're not is seeking. Yeah, so. They had an interesting, a lot of people send me stuff. So a guy sent me a new study they've done. It's going to be in the, uh, some big psychological, you know how the, a study needs to have peer recognition. Well, it's gotten peer recognition. And it's really obvious, but it's saying, you know, uh, meditation uh, reinforces the ego. <laughs> and it's like from Harvard or somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> 
yoga and re and meditation actually produce more self-esteem and they do just like in recovery yeah it's for the action figure yeah to feel better so maybe you'll give itself a break well the same thing so they did the tests and people who do yoga of course you feel better if you think yoga is a noble thing to do right it's sort of like you feel bad when you rob a bank because you feel robbing a bank isn't a noble thing to do yeah but this whole idea of using something, this is what Ramana says beautifully. He says there's a presupposing of a non-existing thing. Do you hear that? Presupposing. So supposing is like assuming. I'm supposing, you know, that uh, the place will be open. And then I drive there and I find out it's closed. I could have looked it up, but I just suppose, hey, I, you know, it's got to be open 10 o'clock at night. But it isn't open 10 o'clock. It's at 8. Yeah, it's closed. So presupposing or assuming or, or uh, assuming is even closer because my whole life is based on assumptions. They are. I assume a lot of shit all day because you don't really want to get involved in so much shit. You're just skating, aren't you, most of the time. I assume this, I assume that. I just, da, 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 da. So the presupposing, it's a beautiful statement. So let's say assuming. Because it sounds better tonight for me. But it says pre, pre-assuming. So when you assume, it pre-assume something. So it does a little trick in time, like a, a frog jumping from, to, on a lily pad, but this time it jumps to the, to the before. So it jumps before from the after. So there's a presupposing. So there's conscious content. You can see it. You can experiment yourself. There's seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching right now, yes? That's happening. That's like the initial... Yap, and then time starts kicking in. So, bam, oh, conscious contact. Then, after the contact, something arises. The mental process kicks in. Yeah? It's sort of like you turn the key, which is consciousness, and then the engine fires, yeah? which is the claiming. Yeah? All right, so then the mental process arises and says, implies or presupposes that it is a thing that's doing everything. Yeah? So the con- the seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching now is used to imply a seer, a feeler, a taster, a toucher. Yeah? So it claims the consciousness and says, I'm the one who's conscious. Yeah? And the same thievery happens with every other activity. So thoughts, yeah, the thoughts arise, and in those thoughts, a thought arises that you're the thinker. But that thought makes a little time jump and goes, I'm the one before all the thoughts. Yeah? One thought out of a million, but that one thought says, I'm the thinker. That thinker now gets presupposed, and now you believe somehow you're thinking the thoughts, or the thoughts are about you, or something like that. Yes? Same thing with feeling. Feelings arise, there's a notice of them. The mental process arises, says, I'm the one who's having the feeling. And the I is represented by this, yes? This is its reference point. It needs a a pole to stick all its little circuits, you know, all its little stories, all its little, like, fucking, what do you call those things when you do a poet reading? You know, a little notice, yeah? All the notices get stuck with the little pins on the pole. Without the pole, the notice would just fly around. They wouldn't stick anywhere. So the body is the representation of the claiming, yeah? So when it says, my, as a thinker, you don't feel like you're a think thought. You feel like a body that's thinking, don't you? When there's an action, it feels like you're doing it as a body. Like when you fart, and it says, who cut the fart? And then, what? I didn't actually fart. A fart occurred. But in this place, you, you fucking farted. And then you deny it. But you know what I mean? But the fart happened, and then there's a claiming that you're the farter. And then you, there's embarrassment. And no, I didn't fart. And some people will fucking fight to the death not to claim a fart. It's amazing. Well, this is what's happening all day. Yeah? What's happening all day? This is the thievery. And then we assume, we start at a fixed, made-up reference. Yeah? And it's just like those, the, one of the first big robberies in the computer age is they took like a quarter of a penny out of thousands and millions of things It went on for years, and it came up to be a lot of money because so many things, just no one would notice it, like a quarter of a penny or something. But zillions of them added up to a lot of money. See, this is like the robbery of the mental state. Yeah? It doesn't, it claims 
everything, all the activities to imply you. It just doesn't uh, imply you without a backup. It's using all the thinking, all the feeling, all the doing to imply the doer. It couldn't get any traction if it just says you're the doer. But it says the doing is used to imply the doer. So you believe as soon as the doing is claimed to imply the doer, the doer gets presupposed and now you think you did it. See it. If you don't see the heist, you're going to live from its effects. This is, just see it. You can see it. Here's a thought. Yeah. Then there's a notice of the thought. Yes, that comes after. The thought appears. Then there's a noticing of the thought. That which notices the thought presupposes that it's before the thought and takes the role of the thinker of all thoughts. Yeah? It's just little heights. Does it all day. Feelings. Feelings are coming. You know how many feelings are going across your sense, sense board? Tons of them. A lot of them never even get noticed. Yeah? Tons of stuff. Whatever feeling gets noticed, this thing arises after the feeling and says, I'm the one who's the having the feeling. I'm the feeler. And you'll hear people. People will have a feeling. They say, I didn't want to feel that. See? That which comes after has no fucking power over the feeling. It says, I didn't want to feel that, but you did because you're not the fucking feeler. You're the effect. The feelings are producing effects. You're not the cause of the feelings. That's why you don't have much power over them, yes? It's an assumed power that creates all the freaking frustration. Just like in AA, it says, hey, the dilemma is powerlessness. And why is it a dilemma? Because you think you have power. If you realize you had no power, you would be in a state of powerlessness and you would feel tons of fucking power. But when you exert power that you don't have, you experience powerlessness, which is frustration. No one's fucking doing what I want. They're not da da da. No one understands, you know, you're not getting your freaking way because you have no fucking power. You're not, you're being, dre you're the cart, not the horse. The horse is pulling the cart. You think you're fucking driving it. The cart has no, it, it's like a hamster wheel. Without the hamster, there's no wheeling going on. And if you, you know, if you see it and then you think you know you saw it, there'll be more seeing of that arising think you know you see it. Then if another one you think you saw more and there's a subtle claiming, you will be, you'll see it again. And those moments where that which is claiming to behind the camera is seen in front of the camera is like an eternal fucking put bit of knowledge. Once you get a glimpse of what you're not, you may, what you're not may think you forget it, but what you are doesn't. Yes? Yeah. And then, all right, another thing. This message isn't for you. Obviously, you've seen me before. This, I am never talking to you about this. I am talking to what you are about you. It goes nowhere to talk to you about the Buddha. It goes really somewhere if I talk to the Buddha about you. Yeah. So there's no point. I've seen it hundreds of times talking to someone about the Buddha just fucking confuses them even more. But to talk about the Buddha about you, that goes, that can be that whack, yeah? Because suddenly you see the whole situation, not from what you're not, but from what you are. And that little glimpse is like foreverness, yeah? You may seem to forget it, but that which seems to forget it isn't you. That's that thing that thinks it can forget it, then thinks it has to remember it. You cannot remember what's always happening. You can only be what's always happening. So this stuff becomes more and more clear. You don't try to find the absolute in the volatility, yes? You surrender in the volatility about the absolute. And who's the better for it? You and this. And I'm telling you something. After it gets over, I wanted it my way, I wanted to be right, it humbly says, hey, fuck it, I'm working a whole lot better. Yes, I think I'll stay surrendered, stay in the, in the realization that I'm not managerial quality, do all that. And then suddenly, the fucking <laughs> action figure, you know, 
It's driving wreck, it's great. It's not running into shit anymore, not being thrown in the garage anymore, not getting arrested, nothing like that. It's just grazing around, not bothering anyone in fucking Burlington. Yeah. Very little, very little to be observed. So when people say, how are you, Paul? How are you feeling? I fucking don't know. <laughs> the gods have been released, man. Fuck it. No one's watching Paul anymore. How's Paul? It's Paul. Fuck it. It's all, they've all been, they've got an early retirement, basically. <laughs> you know? I could care less on a level how Paul is, to tell you the truth. Really. So, maybe other people will describe it differently. Then go hear them. I don't know. This is... I think non-duality, hmm, hmm. see, I believe it's a, it, will, it will illuminate whatever you're doing, but it is not a path to illumination. Yeah. I believe it will illuminate whatever you're doing, but it is not a path to illumination. I don't think you can try to translate timelessness into time to find timelessness. I just don't, so. You know, any questions? Yes, you had one. It's gone by now, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I got a different question. All right. So, um, how about drugs? Like, um, Love them. Like, people say, people, say like people say, like, mescaline is a good one to choose. I've tried it before, but only, like, when I've been really drunk, so it hasn't been very useful. Oh, uh, mescaline with being drunk, I don't know. I don't know, man. If I, uh, I have no problem with it. So if you're drawn to it, it may be of help. In a way, see, I believe there's a lot of things going on here. And one of the things going on here, I think the Course in Miracles catches very well, where it says, hey, listen, bro, you and I, not meaning you and I, but yeah, you and I are the dreaming of this dream. We're going to dream ourselves out of the dream. Yeah, so that would be, what would dreaming yourselves out of the dream look like? Like it was happening in the dream, yes? If you're going to use the dream to dream yourself out of it, it would look like doing things here, going to meetings, doing this, doing that. Yeah, it would. That would mean using the dreaming to get out of the dreaming. So you and I are the dreamers of the dreaming. What we're going to do is dream ourselves out of it, and as we do, the dream will get happier. So it doesn't mean maybe all the outside gets, but maybe the way you're traveling is. So that's a good indication. Yes, in the old little time frame, you're on the right track, so to speak. Yes, it doesn't say you're going to be in an eternally happy dream. It's going to end, and usually the sign of happiness is it's coming up really fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I think, is such one of the most beautiful things to, to calm the fucking seeking beast, yeah? We can't really do anything wrong here. It can all be used. Just like when I got into recovery, it was mind-boggling. I was sure that the last years of my life had absolutely no value. I was living like a rat, living off of situations, fucking just scurrying around, just trying to stay as high or loaded as I could, yeah? When I reviewed it, I could see no value in any of it, yeah? Didn't receive or give any love for years. It just take, took, took, took. And then I go into recovery, and in some way, I let something else start running the show, and that shit that I thought was shit and always going to be shit was used, was recycled, and created an incredible amount of value to be of help to other people. Yeah. What a beautiful, beautiful possibility. So, it's more what's directing the dreaming yeah, here. If the mental state seems to be the main director of the dreaming, it can be somewhat nightmarish, yeah? Because you're occupied by what's not happening. And maybe you could be in a safe place right now that would appropriately, your response would be chilled out, but in what's not happening, anything can happen, and it's producing tons of anxiety that some of it may, yeah? So many people 
are really under a, like a, you know, they're doing in Silicon Valley, like low dose LSD, hoping that the, every day, like three days a week or something to try to get their creative things done. But let's say you're getting like a low dose of electrocution anxiety all day, but what's happening? Like 50 whacks, like getting stung by 50 wasps every day. You're gonna be fucking afraid of going outside, right? And so we're under a lot of fucking manufactured stress produced by the activity of the head because we have so much faith in it, yeah? We believe in the thoughts. We believe it's me that's going to be destitute. We believe in it all. And the amount of belief you have is the amount of influence that can have on now. So you can be a wreck right now, and everything's beautiful in this moment. It's because you're not responding to what's happening now. You're reacting to yesterday and tomorrow. Man, it's incredible. You have to see the power that's involved there. Labradors cannot fuck their day up by worrying about next week. You know? Labradors aren't laying, itching them, saying, will I be playing fetch next week? They have none of that fucking going on. They're confined to the moment in a lot of ways. We are entertaining these impossibilities as if they're so, and producing tons of fucking manufactured havoc. Out of, a, out of an imaginary field. We're smoking a fucking crop from an imaginary field of what's not happening. How are, you gonna, how are you gonna help someone if the problem they're having is imagining? If they're imagining the problem, any trying to help would, would uh, give it more reality than ever, yes? It's a tricky thing. I was thinking if I was a psychiatrist, I was going to specialize on what's not happening. And I'd, ha I'd only work one day my whole career. Because I'd, I'd have 60 uh, appointments for the day. Everyone was thought they were going to get an hour, but what would happen is they'd come in, start bitching about what's not happening. I'd say, Mr. Smith, that's not happening. See you next week. <laughs> what? And he'd be out. Because in fact, that's the clearest thing to say. It's not happening. I wouldn't maybe not even have to do the afternoon appointments. I could retire, yeah? Because in fact, it's true, isn't it? Most people are flipping out now, but not based on now, are there and then. What is that but playing God? Yeah, so. I can't say it any better, really. I try to, I've, I've been used by this, whatever it is, and it will be said better probably next year or whatever, but it's just, you can just turn over the fish so many times and see it from so many different angles, but it's a cod. You're gonna get <laughs> cod, you know, because it's not gonna turn into a mackerel or a fucking prehistoric shark. It's a cod, it's, just a, it's an invitation, it hits, yeah, you'll be called, just like a spiritual subpoena, you'll be called to a court, but that court will be the court of light, and all your seeming transgressions will be seen through, and you will have what? Acceptance. Acceptance for what? Well, let's start with this, yeah, and see where it goes. And maybe when that acceptance arises, you'll see that, in fact, you've never had it since you were about six years old. There's been a drive somehow a constant movement like living on one of those moving sidewalks at the airport you see beautiful things but you can't stop to really enjoy it because you're moving to a bigger better moment it's slavery it's fucking slavery I figure if you, if you have a sense that it's slavery and someone points it out to you, a possibility of being free becomes available. Yeah? It just makes sense. That's to me is the shoe fits. Wear it. I came in and I heard, hey, you cannot use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. And one of those times I heard it, I heard it from the Buddha's point of view. And it had a huge avalanche of information in me. It downloaded and explained my whole life since I was five years till now. That's what was happening all the time. The Buddha was being used to seek the Buddha in many, many apparitions and names and forms, but it was the Buddha, the Buddha symbolizing peace and equanimity and a, and a sense of freedom, yes? That's all it was seeking, but it was using that 
using it to seek it. That's why it's never fucking found. You can find everything that's not you. You cannot find what you are. And that, in a lot of spirituality, that logic is still used that you're going to try to find what you are. But the only possibility we have concerning it is being it. And I believe we're being it right now in the process of not thinking so. And you can see thinking before thinking. You are behind the camera. You can see it. You can see thoughts, hear them. Yeah, you can take a sound back to that which cannot be heard. You'll take a thought back to that which not can be, cannot be thought. Yes? You will find yourself by seeing what you're not. It's the only way you can get there. The 45th time. Let's throw the card over. Throw the card, the card, the card, the card, the card. How many years you've seen me? What was served? How many years have they come with? Cod. Nine years. Have we put a cook for that book out? No. It will cook the way it's going to cook with you. I have nothing to do with it. I can tell you how it cooked here. But hey, it may come out different in your little bakery. <laughs> but I know one thing, this, this possibility, when it, when it took, it's become the last answer. And I've never run into a last answer in this life until then. I have not seeked any new answer. I don't look for a revised, radical, turbocharged answer. I'm not trying to put legs on the snake, or fucking paint, Lipstick on the pig. I'm just, it's just over. Yes? My desires are quite minimal. Like, I can get a latte. Even in Burlington, I can get a good coffee. If I look hard enough on Yelp. <laughs> this is what gives me great joy. What can I say? It does. <laughs> the Yankees are doing good. I'm Stoked, you know, Yankees. <laughs> Shoot me. <laughs> yes. Okay, so sorry, I got another question for you. Could you frame it like in a scientific way? Like, does that have anything to do with your brain? You know what I mean? like... Well, this place does. So scientifically, now, the observed is distorted by the observation. The greatest influence of every experiment is the influencer. My throwing in there. You can't study what's studying. You can't be, get behind what's studying to study it. There is a point very, very close that you end and your job's over, and that is. Yeah. Follow it. You can study everything, but you can't study the studying. The hardest thing that is escaping them is consciousness because they're looking for it. They think it may be produced by the brain or it's coming through the brain, but they have a fucking fly and they have no idea what's happening. Yeah. As Zen says, the highest form of mind is I don't know. All right, so look at that, neuroscience. You put a simple, you wanted science, right? Yeah. So there's one of the earliest ones I saw, and it was way long ago in Australia. They had a neuroscientist sit in this little room, put the electrodes on her, and then they had a big like clock with an arrow. And they told the lady, stop it whenever you want. So she starts stopping it. And then sometimes she would be saying to herself, I'm going to stop and then fool herself and then stop it, you know, trying to trick the machine. And then they looked at all the information and the brain fired about four seconds before she thought she chose. Yes. So the brain had already chose where it was going to stop the thing. And then the narration arose and said, I'm the one who stopped it there. There you have it. What more do you need? Now, some research says the selfing takes seven seconds. I think it's faster. So when con conscious contact brings something into notice, 
the noticing of it kicks up the mental process. The mental process arises, says, I'm the one who saw it. That's what's happening. Small heist, thousand and million times a day, creates seemingly a big heist. Yeah. And the funny thing is, we're the last ones to know because its whole strategy is the act of being identified. So when you're under that, you believe you're it. Yeah. And so everything you study from there is from there instead of studying that. Because when you try to study that, you call it you, and it can't be studied, but it's not you, and you can study it. You can see what you're not, but not from what you're not. You can see what you're not. You are not the reference that it's fabricating. You're before the reference, and it's no before, because there's no fucking time, but to express something, you're before it. Yeah, you've given up that power by being, by being identified as being here. And now from here, you're looking for it. Yet it's what's looking. St. Francis tried to save you tons of time. He said, what's looking is what you're looking for. So you'll stop fucking looking for it. Where is it? Let me act nonchalantly. Oh, you're never going to see what's looking with what's looking. I don't see, you know, the, the, the logic, the defiance of the mental logic, its stubbornness, is that he cannot see an action without it inferring an actor. It cannot see a verb without sticking a noun to it. So if it isn't I didn't do it, you didn't do it, God did it. You know, there's always someone it wants to pin it on. There's just verbing. There's just seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, thinking, touching, da 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 There's just mental state arising, saying it's to see you here, da 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 And then there's a space, it all's appearing, and just like the sky today, and all that appears in the sky leaves no freaking mark on the sky. Does the sky, oh, the sky sees Aer Lingus, does it shut off, no, not letting Aer Lingus in there, no. Whatever's are flying around in there flies through the sky. You never hear the captain say, oh, I ran into a big chunk of sky. There's some stubborn sky up here. Won't let me go through. No, it's fucking going through. Tons of 4th of July explosions never rip it open. You know, it's like a screen with movies. A melodrama doesn't wet the screen. Fucking army movie doesn't blow the holes in the screen. The screen, I bet you it's the, it's the cheapest business in the world to get into, you only probably buy one screen for the whole 60 years of the theater. And it'll hold as many movies as you want to fucking play on it, yet not be affected by any of them. What are those mimicking? A, you know, it's like trying to draw a picture in the manifested sand. <laughs> so the monkey goes, I'm not a monkey. <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> I can say it thousands of ways. We could be here hundreds of times, and I don't get bored of it. I don't because it's like verbal jazz. It just goes off. It's like John Coltrane just loves the riff, you know, and try to capture what's not able to be captured. You know, try to get it to the nibbus, nibbus of it, and you still can't get it. So it keeps it quite entertained, you know. So here, simple one, very simple world of one sense, yeah, feel. No seeing, no hearing, no tasting, no touching, just feeling. So sense of feel. So this is how you would have an experience, all right? And now suddenly in this world, there's gloves also. So there's the hand that can feel, and there's a glove. And the glove comes on the hand. Maybe even the hand put it on, but once it puts it on, it forgets that it's the hand and takes itself to be the glove, yes? Now the glove is a very rough material. So whatever it touches feels fucking rough. You can touch 800 different things, it feels basically the same, yeah? Every time it feels the surface, the softest surface, it's rough, yeah? Because you're not feeling that, you're, you're, you're feeling an interpretation, the glove is interpreting. The, the message of softness isn't getting to the hand because there's this glove on, yeah? So let's say, it starts, there's some frustration going on because in this world they have a scripture about nirvana, and nirvana is like the feeling of a thousand rose petals at once. Yeah. Now the glove, the glove works really hard to get this 
place called Nirvana, and he, arrive, he arrives there and he feels the rose petals, but they don't fucking, they feel just like everything else because of the glove. So then it has to make up a righteous story. There is rose petals because it does have a sense felt, and you got to fucking find those rose petals, and then fundamentalism grows, yeah? Fucking dogma grows because there's no livingness in it. Yeah, you don't feel the freaking thing, but you believe it. You don't feel it. All right, so now the, the glove starts thinking, man, I got to become something other than a glove. Good luck. <laughs> All you need to see is I'm not the glove from the hand's point of view. The glove hearing is not a glove. It will try to be an unglove, yeah, <laughs> which is a bigger glove than a glove. But if the hand hears it, what possibility may arise? I can come out of the freaking glove. How long did it take? No time whatsoever. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, the glove goes back and all it feels is roughness again, but it doesn't fucking fool it. It's a hand. It is a hand. It always was a hand. It always will be a hand. Yes? Yes. It's like a chalkboard. We just drew 80 pictures of nothing. One of them has to hit, yeah. I hope. None of them have to hit. You are it anyway. All right, that's it, I think. Wait. What? <laughs> I have a question. Oh. No! <laughs> okay, so what do you make of the studies that I've heard about that claim that people who meditate actually reduce the activity in the part of the brain where sense of self is has found to be located what will happen is what's left there will claim to be the one that's losing the sense of self you can reduce the sense of self as much as you want there'll still be a claiming that produces the sense of self mm. It'll be a subtler sense of self. Look at what's happening. People are trying to become a non-self as a self. That's the frustration of non-duality. They've heard there isn't a self. They heard this. They heard that. They think they know it. They understand it. So in a sense, but they're still trying to become it. See? The mental state will, will try to become things all day. It just doesn't want to be it. It doesn't want to arrive. It doesn't. It would love to arrive. It doesn't want to be there. It really doesn't. Yeah. It can't change its costume quick enough if it's here. It needs time to claim everything. Yeah. So if you're attempting to become what you are, it has plenty of time to claim you. Put ornaments on. You'll have a loving gaze, maybe or robes. You'll look the part, whatever that means. Just like what they did with Jesus. He was probably a dark you know, Arab type, and they have him a blue-eyed surfer from fucking <laughs> Santa Barbara. I mean, it's like unbelievable. That's, if you're going, I'm, I'm going to meet Jesus, you're going to be fucking surprised. It's the people you've been hating down here. He's going to look just like them. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, and I have no problem with anything. Meditation's great. It takes your blood pressure down, can calm the fucking monkey mind. But maybe, just maybe, entertain the possibility that while you're doing that stuff, the mental state is claiming to be the doer of it. That's all. And it can use even the greatest methods of freedom to, to bond you to the idea of the one who's free. That's what it does. Yeah. You know, let other people's rude awakening save you fucking time. <laughs> and listen, maybe. Take some freaking advice. Yeah? If the shoe fits, wear it. Does it sound like maybe when Hoang Po, this great Zen master, was talking to Steve, Mary, and Joe, he wasn't really talking to them. He didn't say, Steve, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. He was talking to the Buddha nature of Steve. And he was telling, asked, telling the Buddha, hey, Buddha, a.k.a. Steve, <laughs> you can't use yourself to find yourself. 
Now Steve can get very confused if, he, if it's the one who claims to be the hero of it. But if it gets through the defenses of Steve and hits the Buddha, which I don't think is hard to do if that nature is everywhere, you must be able to hit it with any ball you throw. If it hits the Buddha, the Buddha will go, hey, I may not be Steve. There you go. That works. That's it? Yes? One, two. Oh, <laughs> fucking. I thought I was winning that furniture. You know? Because I will, because, yes. Okay, what do you think about the Sarga Do you have any thoughts on him? And, uh... No. <laughs> I like him a lot. See, it's hard to riff on him because he's so complete. You can just read it. So read him. Other people lend, leave a little room to riff. I mean, you know, you can, you can hear it, read it, and then really riff on it. But I, I, Nisargadatta is pretty complete in and of itself. He is. So just leave it be. Yeah, and he said it better than I can. I imagine. So yeah, but I like them. I like I am that. I saw Ramesh Balsakar and was involved with him. But I liked the guy Murti. Did you ever meet Murti? He was an Indian guy that used to hang out there. I liked him a lot. I don't know where he went. But that was in 2000. And uh, I had read Ramesh's books, some of them. Who cares? I liked that one. And so I knew he was old, so I wanted to go see him. Just like I saw Sai Baba earlier. And, you know, I got a bug up my butt and I just do it. So I went to Bombay. And I thought I'd go to. I might as well riff on it. So I was going to go there for like 12 days and then go to Tiruvannamalai for 16 days, then come back for a few more days for mess. So I did. I went there. And the funny thing is, a lady sent me a video of him, you know, a couple of months ago. And it was not a well made one, like 12 minutes. And she says, watch this. And I don't usually watch videos. So, but then she sent me another one. She said, please watch this. So I watched it. And he's talking to someone, and it's me. I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was trippy. It's like he was, because what happened there, when you go there, if, they, if you were new to going there, they wanted you to sit in a chair to ask him a question because he, he wasn't getting inspired by every fucking person who'd been there for a few weeks. So he needed new blood <laughs> to get inspired. And so, he, so they, I was new, so they said, you sit in the chair. So I got there, and then he starts talking to me. And I didn't know who he's talking, you don't see me. And he's going, you know, this and that, do you work, this and that. And I go, he goes, what do you do? And I go, as little as possible. And I heard my voice. I said, fuck. And then that's why she sent it to me. And I remember vaguely, but then in hindsight, by seeing it now, he was talking about, he was talking about the impersonal presence, you know, or there's, and then the personal presence. And he was, to me now, it sounded like he was trying to imply to me that the impersonal presence doesn't have to remember the personal presence because the personal presence never forgets itself, yeah? And he says, and he was telling me, well, what do you do, Paul? And I said, well, when I do anything, I'm a house painter, contractor. He says, all right, so let's say you go to work. When you're at work, do you keep saying, I, I remember I have my house, I have a house, or I have, no, you have a house, yeah? So you work and you're totally engaged in it because you know you have a house. You don't have to keep saying, I have a house, I have a house. And I felt like he was saying exactly how I feel right now. There's no, uh, no need to fucking remember it because you believe you can forget. You can't forget what's always available because it's never been able to be remembered and therefore you can't forget it. Yes? So this, I take this to heart now. I don't have to believe it. I, I have a sense of it. Yeah? I'm not trying to convince that which can't be convinced to go along with it. Just like I don't waste any time talking to people, there's no free will. You feel like you have fucking free will. The body feels like it's choosing, yes? And even Ramana says it. If there's a sense of individualization, there's free will. So if there's a sense of being a body, which we all have, because that's what's happening, yeah? There's a sense of free will. I think it's a waste of time trying to change the source code of the action figure, yes? There's... Be there's there's other things you could go at and point at than trying to say, all right, you don't have any free will. Yeah, give me a break. The next time you walk in and you go, I want a hazelnut coffee, you, and you thought, 
Ah, I was thinking of a soy. It, it's obviously. So all day, the, the, the interpretation of this place from the action figures, you've got some say, yeah? Why fucking confuse it even more? Because now you hear people, well, there's no free will. <laughs> so they just watch whatever channel's on. There's no free will. There's no can change the channel. <laughs> it goes to absurd, weird lengths. Just entertain the possibility you're not that with all of its mechanisms, yes? And you know what? You'll lose interest in the managing of it and the observing it and the fucking witnessing it and the, and the everything else, yeah? You'll lose interest. You won't lose interest. You'll lose interest in that preoccupation. And then the interest, instead of fueling the ability of what's not happening to have an effect in what's happening, it will enrich your fucking day, yeah? You'll have an ease and comfort where you didn't before. The irritable, restlessness, and discontent as the baseline will be flipped over to an ease and comfort. What more do you freaking want? I want it to stabilize. Fuck you. That's just all selfishness from the same fucking place again. Let's have gratitude for what's happened. You've been there how long? How much was, how much did you have to do? Drive up to Toronto from Guelph to see <laughs> some sat saying, wow. You know, the old pilgrimages were like fucking 5,000 years, 5,000 miles. You go, oh, 30 miles in my air conditioned car. What a drag, Richmond and Spadina. Has anything been produced, traveling lighter? If you have to admit that, then freaking follow that up with gratitude instead of a fucking demand for stabilization. How about being grateful? Hey, Jesus, I'm traveling lighter, and I couldn't fucking produce it. I can express it. I couldn't produce it. Fucking far out. Something seems to have done for this what it could not do for itself. Let's sing some fucking praise in that direction instead of constantly thinking, when's it going to happen? When is it going to be over? When is it going to stabilize? Oh, uh, you've gone over your quota one more. That's it. You just used all their questions up. Okay, okay, this, is, this is something you wrote, okay? So that's oh, I wrote something. Yeah, you wrote this in your, in the, in the, your road to nowhere or something? I didn't write that. A guy wrote that. <laughs> yeah. well, okay, was it based on your talk? Okay. It was based so, on him, yeah. Okay, so you're talking about a kid who's burning up an insect, right? With a, with a magnifying glass. Yes. Device. That wasn't me, by the way. <laughs> I never did that. Some kid. Some, 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 some <laughs> okay, so I feel like the insect, my face feels like the insect that's getting burned up by the magnifying glass. And it feels like that a lot. Yeah. Does that suggest a prescription or is that just... Like, well, that's, that's a scene because now the mental processes magnify. They take the diffuse light of presence and they magnify it on you as an object to be thought about. And it's like being incinerated. Yeah. Can you imagine living under a hot spotlight all day? You're never off the fucking center of the stage. It's always me, me, me. That's fucking a lot, a lot, a lot of incineration. Look at them, how the mental states are mutating, getting weirder and weirder. And they found a new way, technology, which is mind boggling. It's like selfing has manifested. It's really, it's, it's unbelievable. It's gonna be interesting to see, yeah? I was, tell, I was thinking of some jokes about it. It's like 30 years from now, there's an archeological dig and they find some of us, and let's say 100 years from now, and we all have this curved spine and they try to hypothesize how it happened. We were looking at the fucking phones all fucking day like this. And they're thinking, they were having heavy burdens building a new fucking no, with everyone's on looking at selfies all fucking day. They are, you know, they're having carp tunnel. They're they getting that shit, yeah, you know. They're going to have certain, I'm telling you, chiropractic should jump right in it. Let's correct the fucking bend of obsession with your fucking iPhone. You can adjust it. You can make so much fucking money. Watch it, isn't it? Can you see you're in a beautiful place and they're just taking pictures of themselves? Fuck. It's, I don't think it bodes well, really, in time. Don't. That obsession level produces an inability. 
you're moving so fast in the slavery line. I mean, I know I have kids that uh, I don't want to record this. <laughs>